Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists dental associates with employment contract issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, is 10 miles a reasonable non compete for a dentist? So, uh, if you are an employee and you have an employment contract, it's very likely that that contract is going to include restrictive covenants. And so, Restrictive covenants are things that the dentist can't do either during or after the contract is terminated. Uh, some common restrictive covenants would include a non-disparagement clause, a non-solicitation agreement, some kind of confidentiality provisions, and then a non-compete, which is usually the most important to most dentists. And so a non-compete simply says, a dentist can't work within their specialty for a certain period of time within a geographic radius of wherever they're working. Uh, so let's kind of break that down. So the non-compete will list the dentist can't practice as a dentist or maybe they're a subspecial subspecialist in their subspecialty for a period of time. So. Uh, a normal period of time is going to be somewhere between one to two years. Ideally, it would be lower. So, uh, meaning on the low end, it, it should be no more than a year. If you see a non-compete that's, uh, you know, three years, five years, one, probably unenforceable, two, completely unreasonable, you should absolutely not accept that. No more uh, than one to two years for, uh, you know, the temporal restriction of any kind of non-compete. Now, as far as the geographic restriction, uh, this depends. So most non-competes are gonna be somewhere between five to 15 miles from your primary practice location. Setting is important. So if you're in a urban environment, in a big city, um, a smaller radius would make sense. Whereas if you're in a rural community, you may not have any other opportunities within 25 miles uh, whereas let's just take Phoenix, for example, where I live, um, Maricopa County is very big. Uh, but if it was 15 miles in, uh, you know, the middle of Phoenix, it could knock out hundreds of opportunities where if you're in some kind of, you know, rural Idaho, uh, 15 miles <laughs> could just be that location and nothing else. So the setting is certainly important. Uh, one thing you want to think about, especially with kind of the current trend of all of the dentist-owned practices being gobbled up by all these corporate-owned practices, um, if you are in a city, you need to make certain that the non-compete doesn't state that the whatever it is, let's just say it's 10-mile geographic restriction, that it applies to your practice location or locations, maybe if you're in one or two of them, and not every location that the practice owns. I've seen very recently um, some of the corporate owned practices that own 10 to 15 locations in a city, and it will say it's 10 miles from every location that they own when the dentist only worked in one location. That is not fair. That is not reasonable. Um, is that enforceable? I don't know. I mean, you may have to litigate or go through arbitration to find out the answer to that. But that's not something that you, you want to accept in an employment contract. That kind of non-compete could essentially force you to move from a community. And for some people, that's huge. You know, if you're uh, from a town, kids go to school there, family nearby, have some deep ties to a community. Uh, some people just absolutely cannot move when the contract ends. And if they have a very onerous non-compete, it's going to be tough for that dentist to work for what, however long the non-compete is. So if it's 10 miles from one location, I would consider that a reasonable non-compete. If it's 10 miles from 10 locations, that certainly is not. Now, how do you negotiate a non-compete? Well, pretty simple. You're just going to have to say, uh, I would like a one-year non-compete and I would like the geographic restriction to only... Uh, attached to maybe the you know the two locations where I generate the majority of my charges if you're working in multiple locations. Now, if the employer says no, we're not willing to change it, 
many of them will say, oh, well, I'm sorry, we can't change it, which is obviously not true. They can certainly change it. They just don't want to. But there is going to be a point where the dental associate is going to have to make a decision of, all right, well, can I accept this or should I move on to a different job opportunity? Uh, it's going to depend upon your specific scenario, but non-competes can be a deal breaker when we're negotiating with an employer. And just to be honest, some of these corporate owned practices simply will say it's a take it or leave it offer. Now you can find opportunities out there that could meet your needs. I find uh, dent, you know, dentist owned practice, smaller dentist owned practices are certainly much more flexible, uh, as far as the non-compete goes versus the corporate owned practices. So you may have a, uh, you know, kind of a better, uh, luck negotiating in that type of environment. But ultimately, uh, it's just going to depend upon whether it's important to you or not. Some people, you know, they'll move to a community for a job. They have absolutely no plans to stay. And they say, all right, after this job ends, I'm moving on somewhere else. And in that scenario, you could focus your negotiation on, uh, you know, kind of different things. There has to be some kind of list, right? When you're negotiating a contract of, of what's important to you. And so if a non-compete's the most important thing, you really have to focus on that. Whereas if the non-compete doesn't matter to you at all, it's not even worth bringing up. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of a, a little primer on what's a reasonable non-compete for a dentist. If you have any questions, you can always call my law firm at the phone number listed below in the description. We're happy to answer any employment uh, contract related questions you have. Uh, or you can reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. And I appreciate you watching this video. Thanks.